fiberglass panels. That's something that's yeah. Yeah. Let's make it authentic.
Pari Radha Rajarta Asta Terra Sita Sri Simada is the language of the Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Mupada Ki Jananda Koti Vaishnava Vrindhi Jaya Iviti Vrindhi Acharya Sri Gopada Ki Jaya Nama Acharya Sri Gopada Ki Jaya Nama Acharya Sri Gopada Ki Jaya Prem Sikaho Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nitta Nanda Sri Advaita Gadana Shavakshari Gaur Bhakta Vrindhi Ki Jaya Shri Radha Krishna Gopavina Shamakun Radha Kundagiri Govardhana Kije Shri Vrindhi Bhagandham Kije Shri Maya Purnavati Tham Kije Rambo Mai Kije Jamuna Mai Kije Bhakti Devi Kije Tosi Devi Kije Shamavira Bhakta Vrindha Kije Nittai Gopramanandi all glories to the assembly devotees. All glories to the assembly devotees. All glories to the assembly devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Shamini Tinamane Namaste Sharashati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nevisesha Shunyavari Pusjatya Dashutharine Mukam Karuti Vachalam Pangolangayate Girin Krupa Tamaham Bande Siguru Dinatarinam Panchakapaduru Vyusha Krupa Sindhu Vyavacha Patika Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitana Pravanitananda Shia Daita Gadarhana Shiva Shari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we are reading from third canto, chapter 28, text 42, I hope that's correct. Let me see if I'm correct. Yes. <coughs> Sorry, what's that for me? 42. 32842. I'll just do it word by word when he's well Mars is sitting at him. Sarva Bhuteshu. Chatmanam Sarva Bhutani Chatmani Ikshetananya Ikshetananya Pavena Bhuteshu Iva Tad Atmatam. Atmatam. So you should have that memorized by now. <laughs> it's only one word that we're not familiar with. Anyway, let's try it. Sarva Bhuteshu Chatmanam Sarva Bhutani Chatmani Ikshetan Nanya Bhavena Ikshetan Nanya Bhavena Bhuteshiva Taratmanam Bhuteshiva Taratmanam Sarva Bhuteshu Chatmanam Sarva Bhuteshu Chatmanam Sarva Bhutani Chatmani Sarva Bhutani Chatmani Nanya Bhavena Ikshetan Nanya 
of different energies of the Supreme. In this way, the devotee should see all of the entities without distinction. That is realization of the Supreme Soul. Purport. As stated in the Brahma Samhita, not only does the Supreme Soul enter each and every universe, but he enters even the atoms. The Supreme Soul is present everywhere in the dormant stage. And when one can see the presence of the Supreme Soul everywhere, one is liberated from material designations. Dormant meaning, he's there but we can't see. Well, some of us can see, some of us can't. The word Sarva Bhuteshu is to be understood as follows. There are four different divisions of species, living entities which sprout from the earth, 
living entities born of fermentation or germination, living entities which come from eggs and living entities which come from the embryo. These four divisions of living entities are expanded in 8,400,000 species of life. A person who is freed from the material designations can see the same quality of spirit present everywhere or in every manifested living entity. Less intelligent men think that the plants and grass grow out of earth automatically. But one who is actually intelligent and has realized the self can see that this growth is not automatic. The cause is the soul. And the forms come out in material bodies under different conditions. By fermentation in the laboratory, many germs are born, but this is due to the presence of the soul. The material scientist thinks that eggs are lifeless, but that is not a fact. From Vedic scripture, we can understand that living entities in different forms are generated under different conditions. Birds evolve from eggs, and beasts and humans are born from the embryo. The perfect vision of a yogi or devotee is that he sees the presence of the li living entity everywhere. Okay, so Andantarasta Paramanam Chayantarastam that Prabhupada is referring to Brahma Samhita that verse Krishna is within the Adam and Prabhupada is saying here He's within the atom and with, within every living entity in the dormant stage. So what does that mean? As I was saying before, at least my understanding, it's dormant for us if we don't see it. And when we read verses like this, usually our response is, okay, I've heard this before. Krishna's in the heart, Krishna's in uh, the soul is equal in all forms. But actually, unless one is Mahabhagavat, they can't see this. We can see it through intelligence, we can see it through Shastra, but to actually see it, that's the position of Mahabhagavat, which is why Mahabhagavat doesn't preach, because everyone's equal, so who's there to preach to? And in fact, if you take it one level further, not only does the Mahabhagavat see everyone equal, but he sees himself less than everyone. So that's the vision of the Mahabhagavata. Every living entity is equal, there's no one to preach to, but I'm, of all the equals, I'm worse than everybody else. So, like, um, these are nice meditations. Vishana, I believe it's Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur said, Well, how do you know if you're actually seeing Krishna and the, and the Spirit? So, how do you know you're actually seeing it? What's, what's the realization? That if there's any attraction to the opposite sex, there's, that means you realize that you're the body, right? Because this is the platform when you realize you're not the body, no one else is their body, therefore there's equal vision. If I in any way identify with my body, there will be attraction to the bodies of the opposite sex, and I therefore I know I'm not on that platform. Now, the Inconceivably, to us, as conditioned souls, the pure devotee, the Mahabhagavat, somehow or other, of all the eight billion, four hundred, well, eight billion, eight billion, whatever it is now, two hundred million people, not species, eight billion, well, now we're almost up to the species, right? Eight billion, four, eight, no, that's only eight million. The eight, Eight, what are we, eight billion? Yeah, we're almost up to the one person for each species. Maybe that's what's happening. Yeah. Anyway, um, as a funny side point, Prabhupada said, if you do devotional service, you'll be born in, as a human being in your next life. So other devotees are like thinking, okay, that, you know, okay. Then Prabhupada said, Monkeys are considered human species. <laughs> so, you know, don't relax. Anyway, so, in there, 
On our planet here, there are 8 billion human species, you know, what to speak of all the other species. And a pure devotee, somehow or other, thinks, this is his realization, he thinks that everyone is better than me. If you think about that too long, you'll realize, well, you don't have to think about it long. If you think about it for a few seconds, you'll realize that I cannot understand that. But that is, at least we understand, we can understand, but we understand that's the attitude of a pure devotee. And that's why Krishnas Kavaraj famously said, I am lower than a worm in stool, because it's like getting down to like everyone's better. So worm and stool is pretty down there, right? So that's what he means by saying I'm lower than a worm and stool, everyone's better. Now, there is a conversation with Srila Prabhupada. And some man asked Prabhupada, do you see everyone equal? Are you a self-realized soul? He said, no, I don't. I'm not that advanced. The man was upset. Here is the guru of the Hare Krishna movement, and he's saying he's not self-realized. And Prabhupada said, uh, the equal vision that I have is that everyone should, everyone deserves to get Krishna consciousness. I don't discriminate between anyone. I give Krishna consciousness to everyone. That, e that much equal vision I have. And then the man realized that's a higher form of equal vision. So I was, um, before class I was, searching the word equal vision on Vedabase and seeing what Prabhupada said. And he said a few things, but one of the things that was coming up quite often is, for a devotee, equal vision means we equally give Krishna to everybody. And we don't you know, make any distinction, as Adi Lila 7, 7th uh, chapter, Mahaprabhu was giving Krishna consciousness to everyone, despite whatever. So that's, our, that's the devotee's equal vision. So in many of the purports in which this word equal vision came up, the most common place it came up was Vidya Vinaya Sampane Brahmani Gavihashtini, because the translation is he sees with equal vision. Suni Chaiva Sopake Pandita Samadarshana, that's Samadarshana, Samadrik. Uh, here is Ananya Bhavena and uh, Tulya Drik. All these words mean sees with equal vision in different words. But generally, that was always the conclusion. What's the equal vision? Well, sometimes Prabhupada said the equal vision is that Paramatma is there in everybody. So we see every, we see Paramatma in everybody or everybody. And sometimes Prabhupada said, we see the equality of the soul. So either way, we see equality. And the conclusion is, give Krishna consciousness equally to everyone. And so we have stories. We have stories of Srila Prabhupada showing compassion to insects. There are several stories that I'm aware of. Uh, at one time, I don't know, maybe there's a ladybug or something or some insect was in Prabhupada's room and Prabhupada said, there's nothing to eat. This insect's in the room, there's nothing to eat. And I think he told Hari Sarya someone, go put that insect on a flower, the insect's hungry, like on a rose petal or something, so he could eat. Um, sometimes he'd find some insect or butterfly or whatever, to throw it out the window, liberate it, now you're free. Uh, sometimes, They'd be floating around in the sugar juice from the raskula, and Hari Sarva would want to clean the ants up, and Prabhupada would say, no, let them eat. They don't eat much. And I was telling the story last night that there was like an ant or something, Prabhupada said, you see that ant? Narayan Ryan was there, you see that ant? How can we, what can we do to benefit this ant? Prabhupada was asking, what can we do to benefit this ant? And then, as I said last night, Prabhupada said, if we can make this ad Krishna conscious, we consider our own movement a success. Like, so, uh, I like to ask devotees, when was the last time you were thinking about 
blessing, benedicting, and end. I've asked that question many devotees. Some say, oh, today I was feeding the ants. Or, or other ants, other living entities, you know, other insects, when we were like, concerned about insects. We're concerned enough that we won't step on them, of course. But this is the, um, this is the equal vision. Now, there's something else. Because elsewhere in our Shastra it says, don't be equal to everyone. Said, because the second class devotee has to distinguish in order to give Krishna consciousness. He has to avoid people that are antagonistic because if you don't avoid people who are antagonistic, you end up engaging them in committing more offenses. I don't know if any of you have that experience, but as young devotees um, with big false egos, we could not resist the temptation to preach endlessly to antagonistic people to prove that they're wrong and we're right. Have any, any of you ever done that? <laughs> and then your God brothers are like, come on Prabhu, you're wasting your time. No, 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 leave me alone. Wait five more minutes. <laughs> um, and often, often um, they were covered Christians who wouldn't let us know they're Christians. And then finally in the end, they're like, oh, this person's really nice, you know, I think he'll come to the temple and then we find out he's a Christian. Not that Christians are bad, but there's some people who are antagonistic, so the Shastra says you should just like leave them alone, let them go along their way. Now we understand devotees are compassionate and we want to help everybody. But anyway, that's the injunction of scripture, make friends with the devotees, worship the Supreme Lord, uh, give Krishna to the innocent and avoid the antagonistic because Unless you're Lord Nityananda, generally, with people like Jagai and Mada, you won't have much success and you're, you might get your head chopped off, basically. So, in the story with Jagai and Mada, as you know, Tavaridas uh, was thought Nityananda Prabhu was crazy to preach to them, but even more crazy to go back the next day. Let's go. Yeah, they just tried to kill you. Let's go back tomorrow. You know, second, <laughs> second time. You know, seconds a charm or whatever. You know. Let's go back. And so Takaridas was like, "This is um, no. This is crazy." So Prabhupada says there in that section, he said, "A devotee has to know their own strength and their own power." He said, "Nitananda could do that." He said, "But if you try to do that, Prabhupada gave the example. You don't know how to swim, and someone's drowning, and you jump in the ocean." Now there's two of you drowning. So you have to know your strength. So the, the pure devotee can purify anyone, anywhere. But second class devotee has to know their limitation. So you try to save someone and you don't save them and they drag you down. So that was Prabhupada's comment on that story. Know your power, know what you can do. We'd like to be like Nityananda, but we're not always, we don't always have that focus. So, I thought I would read some things that I discovered. And I thought they're interesting, rather than to try to remember how to represent them exactly, I thought I could read a uh, few things that I thought were interesting about what I just said. Um, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur has strongly rejected those foolish persons who, under the plea of mercy and equal vision, perceive that a faithless person is also a devotee of the Supreme Lord, and thus try to thrust the Hari Nama holy name upon such offensive people. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta has stated, quote, when childish people think themselves Mahabharatas and act in defiance of the Vaishnava spiritual master, such behavior, behavior simply holds them back from receiving the mercy of the Vaishnava guru. So that it's an injunction to actually hold mercy back from such people. That's an instruction. 
don't give the holy name to the faithless. Bewildered by a false ego, these self-proclaimed devotees gradually become fit to be ignored by pure devotees on the intermediate platform. And that's why that famous conversation when Prabhupada is telling people, you know, if you live like a dog, you'll become a dog in your next life. And the person raises their hand and says, well, I'd like to be a dog. And Prabhupada said, my blessings. <laughs> so I think that's an indication of this. Okay, all right. So we won't give you Krishna, we'll give you dog. It was kind of, you know, everyone thinking, why did Prabhupada do that? Maybe this is the proper explanation. Yeah. Such persons who um, faithless are to be neglected. Bewildered by false ego, these self-proclaimed devotees gradually become fit to be ignored by pure devotees on the intermediate platform, platform and are cheated of the mercy that comes from the devotee's satisfaction. Thus they become a sadhu by constantly committing offenses against the devotees who preach the holy name of Krishna. Your devotees, therefore, in all circumstances, display indifference to those who falsely imagine themselves to be Vishuddha Bhaktas, or pure devotees of the Lord. This indifference is an excellent manifestation of their mercy. That's how they show mercy, through indifference. Unquote. And the purport continues, in other words, those who criticize the Vaishnava preachers on the second class platform for discriminating between those who are fit to receive the Lord's mercy and those who are simply envious are misunderstanding the mission of the Lord. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, in other words, Paritanaya Sadhuna, Bhina Shai Chibhushita. Now, um, Anyway, let's continue. Srila Jiva Goswami has pointed out that even though the Mahabhagavata devotee may act on the second class platform for preaching, his rejection of the envious living entities does not obstruct his vision of the Lord as all pervading. Rather, when a first class devotee or even a second class devotee rejects the atheistic class of men, he is expressing the mission of the Supreme Lord. A first-class or second-class Vaishnava never actually becomes envious of another living entity, but out of intense love for the Supreme, he, become, he becomes angry when the Lord is offended. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta said, I have made many people angry in my life by my preaching. So someday they'll understand that I was their benefactor. Also, understanding the Lord's mission, he discriminates according to the position of a particular living entity. To consider such a Vaishnava preacher as an ordinary envious person, or to consider him sectarian because of his proclamation of pure devotional service as the most exalted of all methods of spiritual advancement, reflects a materialistic vision called Vaishnava Jati Bhuti or Guru Shu Narmati. Thinking of Vaishnava as part of caste um, or the guru's ordinary person. Such an offense drags the offender down to a hellish condition of life. And one more. And then we can have some discussion. According to Srila Jiva Goswami, although a Maha Bhagavat sees every living entity as pure spirit soul, such a Maha Bhagavat still experiences special ecstasies and other symptoms upon meeting another Vaishnava. In other words, he's saying, Okay, everybody's equal. But as they say in communism, some are more equal than others. <laughs> but we, everyone's equal. Okay, everyone's spirit soul. But here's a Vaishnava. And then here's a Mahabhagwa. So everyone's equal on one level, but on another level, there are uh, gradations of advancement. This is not contradictory to his vision as a topmost devotee. Rather, it is a symptom of his love for Krishna. A pure devotee sees every living entity as part and parcel of Krishna and therefore expresses his love for Krishna through love for all expansions and creations of Krishna. Still, such a Mahabhagavat feels special ecstatic love 
upon seeing another living entity directly pleasing the senses of the Supreme Lord. Such feelings are manifest in the statement of the Lord to the Pachetas. If one, quote, if one by chance associates with a devotee, even for a fraction of a moment, he no longer is subject to attraction by the results of karma or jnana. What interest then can he have in the benedictions of the demigods who are subject to the laws of birth and death? So it's glorifying the association of the pure devotee. And there are other verses glorifying association pure devotees. So, Hare Krishna. What time are we in? 8.30? Is that the normal? 8.35ish. Yeah, so maybe we could have some questions, discussions, comments, so on and so forth. Yes, Prabhuji. So understanding that all living entities are equal and the Vaishnava is a friend to all. We don't want to cause unnecessary trouble to any living entity. I was just thinking sometimes we're put in a difficult situation where we have to do what we have to do. I'll give you an example that here at this temple, um, shortly after I came to Hawaii in 1979, we discovered that the temple was infested with uh, subterranean termites. And the ground termites, they can do big damage real fast. So uh, I told the devotees we're going to have to vacate the building, have it tented, and kill them all. Well, all kinds of discussion came up. These are these are ordinary termites who are living here <laughs> at the temple. They're hearing the holy name. They're ashramites. They're the incense. They're. They're special termites, or even any termite, what to speak of the special termites, what to do. So, um, I guess we did the best we could. What we did was we, before the tent did, everyone in the temple, we went to every room in the temple with kirtan and burning incense. And we just chanted and chanted and chanted in every part of the building. And I guess our, our hope was that having eaten the Pushabam, uh, the building, mm -hmm. and, uh, and hearing the Holy Name, etc., that in the next life they would come back to the temple in perhaps human form. But anyway, sometimes we get. And we would come back as termites, and they would do the same thing. Yeah. Us. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying that, so, that we, even though we have that, that vision, yes. sometimes we, yeah. we get the, or, or for example, let's say someone has a very bad infection, and you may need to take an antibiotic. Yeah. Well, that's killing bacteria, and um, so. Yeah, and um, you know that story when a temple was infested with cockroaches. And they had to kill no. them. The prophet said, "You should be killed." But I don't think we have control over the termites. Termites, but I think Prabhupada's point was, we the temple wasn't clean, so the cockroaches were coming. So, uh, yeah. And you must have asked forgiveness to the termites, right? I don't remember if we did or not, but I know we, we did the best we could. Yeah, yeah. That's a, a tough job. And the temple president gets the karma, right? <laughs> that was me. Yeah. Um, Ari Sari Prabhu was once giving a class on this topic. There was a purport in the Bhagavatam that we should feed all living entities, and so we shouldn't use um, insecticides when we're growing vegetables because we should let them eat. I mean, we can use natural ones. But that was Prabhupada's vision. All right, they're insects, they have a right to eat. So let them eat. You know, here's a here's a patch for the insects. I don't know if you can do that, but anyway, that was yeah. That's beautiful, isn't it? That is. Thank you. Anyone else? 
Yeah. So it's the voters who try to be equal and forgiving and compassionate, but then what about sometimes in the society of the voters so there might be somebody who's causing trouble. trouble and it's disturbing the voters. So there's, you know, there's just a lot of Yeah. You know, um, I read a story once where um, an employee was fired and he was upset. And he went to the boss and the boss said, you are going to do much better in another company. That's why I'm firing you. Like, this is actually going to help you. And it was true, it did. So that was also mercy. So if, obviously if a person is not living up to their full potential and you put them in a situation that forces them to, then that's mercy also. So We have this story, we heard, uh, it's a funny story. And I don't know who this was, I kind of get the feeling this was Pancho de Villa. So this devotee is going around playing his guitar, this and that. I don't know what he was doing. I reckon it's a flute. Oh, maybe it's a flute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if a flute would be so disturbed, but a guitar would be probably uh, imitating Krishna. Yeah, that's more dramatic, but I think it was a guitar. Anyway, whatever it was. So Prabhupada. So the, many devotees are complaining. I don't know what else he was doing, why they're complaining, but Prabhupada said, I heard, we'll just use guitar for the sake of... Yeah, I think it's guitar. As I was told, he was singing songs.